Uh, hi, Rekko and so on, hello. Uh, good evening. So, my name is Hafiz Swami. Hafiz Shad Swami. Uh, uh, I hope everyone can see my, my screen, right? Okay. Yes, okay. Thank you. Um, so, Dr. Wan, I want the introduction. Uh, I think this topic is actually is, uh, quite heavy. But, uh, so tonight I will bring uh, just a little bit on the surface about doctor. So, yeah, so just bear with me right, for uh, half an hour maybe. So, uh, yeah, about myself, uh, uh, I, uh, right now I'm serving Run Club as senior software engineer, uh, past companies, uh, before this I serve as uh, and then before that Sunway, and before that Pedronas, uh, so, yeah, and then I also one of the HRDF, uh, HRD Corp accredited trainer, so if, uh, if you wonder what, what does that mean? Uh, national decop tech, national decop academic trainers, meaning that uh, the trainers that uh, completed uh, five day training and certified by the lead trainer, and also when for the accreditation process, and also uh, certified by the appointed panels. Yeah, so uh, basically, if you if your companies uh want to organize a training that uh, claimable uh, from HRD Corp. So one of the requirements you need to find uh, HRD Corp accredited trainers. Yeah. So if you guys want to invite me for your internet process, also get ready. Okay, so let me come. So for tonight, um, we will learn about uh, what is Docker and the benefit of using it, and also uh, understand some uh, basic Docker comments and intro to what is Docker Compose. So, yeah. So, probably if you want to know more about Docker, probably we can have some mini series, probably Docker part two in the uh, future. So, uh, may I know um, among us here, anyone uh, uh, working on PHP project or not JS project? Yeah, I, I see that in S to JS, probably. I don't know about Fatko or Hayi. Yeah, Irfan or Arif. Yeah. So, basically, if you want to deploy a uh, a basic PHP project, uh, you must have a web server. So uh, usually people will choose Apache, and then you need to install PHP, and also if you need database, and people will install uh, MariaDB or MySQL. So let's say you have uh, this one app. Yeah, app A. Uh, your, this is the legacy app using uh, OSTAC, which is Apache 2.4. Uh, HP 5.6, MariaDB 10.1, and you move to 18. And then, so suddenly, not suddenly, uh, uh, the following months or in the future, and then you need to have uh, a new uh, app. We call it uh, app. So you need newer PHP uh, 7.4, uh, newer uh, database also, and also using a uh, newer operating system. So right now, uh, you already have app A on one server, and then you need to have another environment with different setup. So you need to spin uh, another server, so which will incur more cost. And then let's say, yeah. So today nowadays, uh, we're using PHP uh, eight point one uh, with the latest MariaDB and also latest Ubuntu. So you need to spin another uh, server in order to host your application. So, um, how Docker play a role into this? 
So this is overall, uh, in our view, you have uh, three VM, three server uh, running. Um, yeah, maybe uh, one can have a similar cost or different. Okay, so what is Docker? So compared to Docker uh, versus VM, so this is the, the high level uh, overview. So in the uh, Docker container setup, you only have uh, one server, and then within the server, you can have multiple uh, app on its own container or on its own uh, container setup. So you don't need to spend another, another uh, six servers to post for each app. Yeah, so this is uh, one of the benefit uh, for saving. And also you don't need to, um, yeah, basically you, you don't need to set up uh, multiple server for multiple apps. You can use one server and then use multiple container for each app. Okay, I hope everyone is following or uh, for us already. <laughs> Good. Okay, uh, yeah, I want. Okay. So the benefits, uh, like I said just now, um, we have uh, cost saving, and then, uh, yeah, I think um, some of us probably already seen this uh, meme uh, on the internet. Yeah, it was on my machine. And then go to production, but somehow it goes to the production app. And then it becomes a public show. Uh, in uh, some organization, uh, they have uh, op and dev team uh, separate. So the dev uh, work on their machine and then pass the ops to deploy to production. But somehow, uh, probably the instruction from dev is not complete. And then, or the, uh, the ops uh, miss some step in deploying the app, so it will cause a problem in the when the app goes to production. So with Docker, you can have a standardization and productivity, meaning that uh, you can have one same environment on development and also an, on production. Uh, and productivity here means if, let's say, uh, you have a new intern or a new developer coming to your team, they just can use the same uh, Docker container and start uh, working on your uh, project already. Yeah. So portability. Yeah. So th there is no uh, dependency on, uh, let's say, uh, cloud uh, locking. Uh, you can deploy on uh, Google Cloud or AWS or even Linode. Yeah, rapid deployment. Yeah, in order to to start a uh, Docker container, it only takes seconds. Um, compared to if you if you want to start a VM server, it maybe takes a few minutes. And then security because the app is uh, on its own container, the dependency all within the uh, container itself. So uh, you can, you, one app is uh, contained on its own container. So if there is a vulnerability uh, on one container, it will not affect the other. Yeah. And also you can have a robust CICD uh, pipeline, which means uh, faster uh, for testing and faster deployment. Yeah, I hope so far uh, everybody got the uh, the definition, what is the Docker, and then what is the benefit of it. Okay. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, any question? Uh, how do Docker differentiate than uh, usual PC when you development? Eh? Okay, uh, usual PC development, uh, let's say you have no JS, right? You set up, you install the JS um, 12, and then, yeah, I think you cannot have uh, 
a similar setup on on the same PC. Uh, let's say you want to install uh, Node.js 13, right? So using Docker, you can have a container running Node.js 12, and then another container running uh, Node.js 13. Yeah, something like that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, any more question uh, on the Docker container and also the benefits? Okay, I guess uh, no question. Semua mana mana ini, cemerlang. Okay, uh, Docker is not one of the um, Docker is not the only uh, container software available in the market right now. So uh, we have uh, Portman or Alexi. Uh, Portman is the new is the new come to the industry lah. Uh, so, but uh, overall, uh, when um, let's say people do uh, hiring, right? Uh, people always uh, referring to Docker. Uh, up up to up to today, I haven't seen any job ads uh, publishing Portman or Alexi lah. So everybody is mentioned documentation in Docker. Uh, so uh, Portman or NLC also uh, same, similar. Okay. So, uh, in this session, I will not go into uh, step by step on how to install. You can go to docker.com and just download uh, the, choose the installer from uh, your platform if you're using Linux and then choose Linux and or if you're using Mac OS, you can choose Mac OS or Windows. Yeah. So, it works on every platform. Uh, and also, if you are using Docker for development, uh, normally we will install Docker desktop because it will provide you a uh, GUI instead of you. You can run the Docker also from the command line, which is uh, normally on, on the production, we will install Docker engine, not the Docker desktop. But if you do the uh, installer, uh, the Docker desktop, it will also install the Docker engine. Okay. Okay, so next is a basic command. Um, there is a few command at least uh, you, you need to know in order to use uh, Docker. So how, how to list all the created container and its status. So from the thing I can just docker ps dash, dash a. If you run docker ps, it will only list uh, the container that is currently running. So here from my screenshot, I don't have any docker container created yet. Is Docker like yeah. M? Sorry? Uh, is Docker like VMware? No, no. Docker is not VM. Yeah, as, as per like my uh, image right now, just now on, on the previous slide that uh, I compared the VM setup and the Docker setup. So it's uh, different. In VM, you need to uh, specify the resource, install the OS, and then only you can have uh, your apps. But on the Docker setup, uh, you need you don't need the guest OS. You just install the Docker on the host OS. Uh, got it? Yeah, so um, 
you don't need to specify the uh, the resource for each container because all these container will share the resources uh, on the same host. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, on on my screen right now. So this is a uh, uh, the a screenshot whereby I already created a, a, a container uh, uh, which uh, using hello world image. Uh, there is uh, in the Docker um, environment there is uh, multiple terminologies that uh, you need to uh, familiarize, like the Docker container itself. And then we have Docker image. Docker image is basically a template for the container. You can have one image and then you can create multiple container using the same image. So let's say I have uh, here a uh, hello world image. I can create another container. Uh, container ID probably uh, uh, 9, B6, something, something else. And then the image will be the same. Everything else. Uh, at the back here, command we will say I created probably different because I created it uh, uh, newer, so probably uh, yeah newer here. The name will be different. The, the name and the container ID will be unique for each uh, container. You cannot have uh, same container ID for the names and also the container ID. Okay, so so this is a command, uh, most common uh, Docker command that you need to uh, familiarize. Docker PS. And then when when you run a uh, a Docker, uh, see here, I try to run uh, run Docker run uh, hello world. Uh, first Docker will search on my machine if there is any image hello world uh, with let with the latest luckily so if there is no image on on my machine it will install it will download from uh docker image repository which is at uh, hub.docker.com and then after that it will create um the container on my machine so this hello world container, it is just a container that printing a hello world message, like what you see on the screen. So I can uh, run this multiple times in just print this message, nothing else. Yeah. So uh, um, to run a Docker, you can here I run a Docker run hello hello world without any tag here. Uh, it will assume I will want the tag is latest. Yeah, so you, you can pass um, like colon anything as uh, any text that available on the uh, repo. Yeah, later I will uh, show you where's the repo. Okay. And You can also create your own image and post it uh, on the app.com. So create your own repo on uh, any uh, uh, cloud thing provided, such as uh, AWS. AWS uh, has uh, uh, three. They call uh, AWS.
Uh, okay, now I have, um, I already created a container uh, with ID CDB and the name is district underscore MacLT. So to start a container, you can just uh, uh, type docker start and then the container three or four letter or you can use the name. But if you want, if you want to use the name, you need to type the full name. So here I just use uh, the first, uh, the first four container ID. So this is how it runs. And then if you want to stop, just use Docker stop and then the container name. Uh, yeah. Any questions so far on this uh, Docker PS and also? Container. So let's say you you don't want to use that container anymore. You can use uh, command Docker and and then uh, give the ID or the uh, full name. So here I I I am I deleted the container name uh, requesting Stonebreaker. Yeah, for your info, this name is uh, auto generated by. Uh, Docker, if you don't specify the name for the container when you uh, create it. So if you want to have your own name or your own fancy name, you can provide uh, the name uh, using uh, variable uh, or parameter dash dash name when you start uh, a container for the first time. Okay. Uh, next, yeah. we list um, the images that are available on your machine. You can just use uh, Docker image ls a or Docker images uh, a. So uh, let's say if you already have um, used uh, many Docker image, you will list it all here. So at the moment, at, during this, I'm doing the screenshot. I only have a uh, Ubuntu image on my machine. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Talks a bit. So let's say you have uh, so many um, Docker container that you don't want to use anymore or you want to have a fresh start of your Docker environment, you can just type Docker system clone a. So it will uh, remove all the containers and delete the uh, containers that uh, the network that are not used and also uh, the images and the cache. So here I uh, managed to reclaim back 77.8 megabyte. This is because of uh, the image just now, the image size. So if you have so many uh, containers that using so many different images, so it will take up uh, some of your storage. Okay, so yeah, so I have uh, uh, moved to Docker Compose for what is Docker Compose. So basically, uh, just now right, when I run Doc, uh, Docker Run Hello World, that is only to run for one container. If you want to run another container, you need to uh, do the the same process. So let's say if if uh, your project you need ten containers, so that is not really efficient, right? 
So using Docker Compose, you can uh, manage multiple containers uh, easily just using a single file. Uh, we call it Docker Compose YAML file. So how to use the file? Yeah, basically you can just um, define the environment and then uh, start writing your file. It's just a simple text file, Docker Compose uh, YML. And then uh, the command is docker compose up. And then um, all these specified uh, services or container that yeah, you need on the uh, docker compose file will be uh, start accordingly. Yeah, so let's say um, here I have. Here yeah, I have a sample to compose YAML file. So basically I have uh, a service, a DV service. I'm using an uh, image from MariaDB as a database. And then uh, I define the volumes, Docker volumes, so that uh, the data that are on this container MariaDB will not be lost. It will store into a uh, Docker volume name db underscore data and then we specify the uh, the password for root uh, database yeah use the password yeah so whenever you start a docker compose app this uh, will this setting will be set uh, on the fly so you don't need to create a user manually create a database manually so yeah no need for that and then I have a uh, next, I have a WordPress. So this Docker Compose will set up uh, basically two, two containers, uh, one for the DB and then the, the, another, the other one is for WordPress. So this is using a uh, WordPress image, WordPress uh, with the latest stack. Yeah, so, and then uh, we define the port. Uh, in, then the environment uh, variable, such as uh, the, the DB host, uh, the user the password, and the DB name. So, yeah. So basically, when you uh, use uh, Docker Compose, it is uh, more uh, manageable to manage your uh, container. If you have, uh, like, yeah, if you work on, for example, you have a Laravel project, so uh, the JS project, you use uh, multiple database, like you have uh, one is for my, you have a ready server and probably you have varnish or whatever you want to use on your project. Yeah, you can list all that services into one file and then with just one command of the compost up and then all the container will be uh, set up accordingly. Yeah, so any question about Docker Compose? Um, so basically, uh, for Docker Compose, uh, you can have the name is not necessarily Docker Compose though, YML. You can have different name, but if you're using a custom name, you need to specify uh, the parameter so that the Compose know where to find your uh, YAML file. Yeah, okay, uh, so yeah, moving on. So what's what's next? So uh, at this point, I already covered uh, what is Docker and how it, uh, it is like compared to the VM and some basic um, command uh, that normally people use to manage uh, Docker and also uh, overview what is the compost and yeah how how you can write uh, the compost file uh, in the Docker uh, environment there is also uh, another feature that uh, probably not covered in this session yeah probably um, I can do another session on 
Okay. So you can have uh, yeah the volumes. Uh, so basically, the volumes is something like uh, a space to store your data. So, like if, uh, for example, you have a large box container, right? You have lunch, you have food or stuff inside your container, and then if you throw the container together with the uh, things inside the container, it will be lost forever. So the same concept on the Docker. So normally people will attach volumes to the container so that you don't lose data. Yep. So, uh, for example, like uh, in the Docker Compose file just now, I mentioned uh, DBN square data for the volume. And then we have uh, Docker networking. So basically in, um, in the Docker environment, there is uh, Docker defined network network. Yeah. So Docker, we will um, create a network between uh, you can have uh, multiple networks for multiple containers. So yeah. And then uh, image building, um, you can create your own image on top of uh, existing image. Let's, let's say um, you want to compile. Just now I am I'm using WordPress as an uh, example. So you also can have a uh, image for your app. So every time you run um, the image to create a container, your container will already have uh, your codes inside the container. Yeah, you can you can create your own image to do that. Yeah. So Docker Hub, yeah, Docker Hub basically uh, is a space or a site to host the uh, Docker image. Yeah, you can you can create your own or you can also host on uh, Docker Hub. And last but not least, uh, Docker Swarm. Docker Swarm is basically um, a tools to manage uh, a Docker container in multiple nodes or in multiple servers. So you can easily scale your uh, container uh, between uh, many machines. Yeah. So yeah, if you're interested to learn more, probably you can do some research on, on these topics. Uh, I think that's all from me. Yeah. If you have a question or yeah, just, just ask. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. Uh, over to, uh, to post that file lah. Uh, implement uh, continuous deployment uh, dengan Docker? <laughs> okay. Uh... Usually people will use, um, thank you Ifan for that question. Yeah. So do Docker is one of the uh, tools that people uh, use for CICD and normally people will go for uh, Jenkins or Circle CI. These two uh, software is a software that uh, you can use to create your continuous deployment or CICD pipeline. Lah. So you need to uh, basically, you need to have a knowledge on which CI/CD software that you want to use, and then only that you can implement uh, Docker inside uh, and that pipeline. Yeah. So I is using uh, Jenkins. So basically, you need to set up a Jenkins server, and then probably you can throw some uh, uh, command or some scripts to run um, uh, Docker, or there is a Jenkins plugin that you can use to run Docker during your deployment pipeline inside Jenkins. Yeah, so if you guys interested on to set up your CICD uh, pipeline, yeah, probably you can uh, uh, look up for Jenkins 
basically it is a free software you can you can host it locally to test out yeah thank you Fran, for the question Thank you. Thank you, Jeffy.